Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here and going to jump into another video here using the Daniel Smith pans. And this one here, I have no idea when I go into these a lot of times what I'm going to do, but I was thinking sort of an autumn type scene, calling this one Autumn Vibes. And for that, I need to do some orangey warm colors. And I'll tell you what, one of the things that I like using these pads, they're very convenient, the pan sets, um, but they're hard to get at the paints with the hake brush. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use fan brushes, which I really like. And these larger fan brushes, they're almost like having the goat hair brush. And so what I'm doing here is something I've started doing a while back, and that's a lot of times on these papers that are in 100% cotton, I'll throw a little white down first, a little white gouache, a little bit just to kind of fill in the, you know, the, the grain of the paper and a little loose hair right there, pull the loose hair off. It happens, you know, sometimes. Um, and I like a stiffer fan brush, one that's, you know, it doesn't hold a lot of water really, but I have the water right there so I can spray, I can add to it, whatever. But you can see how I can hit the corner of the brush in these little half pans and get the color that I want. This is just like a raw sienna here and just doing the background for the sky. And there's enough water on the paper to really get it to do kind of what I want to do. Something you've got to experiment with, how much water. You can see me pushing the water around here. And another thing I'm doing here too is I'm painting flat. Now, in some ways it's more comfortable to paint on an angle but in a lot of ways, your paint won't roll around like you're trying to do a sky and it looks like a rainstorm. You don't always want that. So a lot of times it's better to just paint flat and your paint will stay in one place on the paper like is happening here. And I'm putting a little bit more of this raw sienna on there. Now I want this to warm up a little bit, so I'm adding a little red, whatever the red is that's uh, in this set whether it be an alizarin or a pyrrole red. I, mean, I forget what's in this set, but, um, you know, once you get to a certain point, a lot of people will say, well, oh, exactly what colors did you use? You know, if you have a yellow and you have a blue, um, you know, ultramarine is the old standby, but if you have your basic colors, yellow, red, blue, brown, and you can have a pre-made green if you like one, uh, but a yellow, red, blue, brown, if you have those, you can really do any kind of painting that you want, but you want more earth tones when you're doing landscapes, in my opinion, a burnt umber. Uh, you want an ultramarine blue. Um, you know, it's not as staining, like if you had a Prussian blue or something like that, although you can use those no problem. This is why I could pick up any pan set, and as long as it has those essential colors, a brown. The only thing they're usually lacking is they're lacking in, say, like a Payne's gray or something to make your colors darker. But for that, you want to use like a red, a brown, and a blue. If you put those together, you can make some good darks. It's a little more, or a little less convenient, I should say, but you can make those darks. So I can go into any store, pick up any pan set, take that out into the field, and uh, have a good time. And I don't have to worry about the paints running. If I spray them good and I agitate them with the fan brush, I can loosen up any of those. Now, I will say using fresh paint out of the tube is, uh, you know, the best way to go. I wouldn't sway anybody from that. But I do like these pan sets. And I know Daniel Smith's pan sets are kind of new for this year. Um, and if they run out, I'll replace the pans. I'll squeeze out, you know, tube colors into the pans. And this one here is nice because it almost has three of every color. It has like two or three yellows, two or three greens, two or three browns. Um, and that's kind of nice. You can combine those together and make sort of a unique color. And when you're painting, you want your paintings to look kind of unique too. So... Um, it's, it's, it's a good idea to do that. Now here I'm adding a little more again with the orange. I kind of want this sort of background, but I don't want, you know, I don't want the painting to look like totally orange. So I'll put a little brown. Brown and orange seem to kind of work out well together. Again, using that fan brush, picking out a little hair. This fan brush I got from, uh, off the internet. I forget, off of, uh, Amazon or something. And they're okay. They don't really stay together well. Um, I like the Fumui 
fan brushes I had sent to me recently. Those are in my bag. I take those with me in case I feel the urge to paint when I'm out. I really want to do more uh, plain air, especially this year. After I went to Colorado last year and I went out and did some scenes, I really wanted to, to do that again. So that'll be uh, my goal for this year. Ride my bike out to a good, nice location. And you can see how that pink and the red in the background is adding to that, giving you a nice vibe, a warm vibe in the air. Without using the oranges and the reds and the yellows, sometimes when you use red and yellow together, you end up with a ketchup, ketchup and mustard look, which I'm not really a big fan of. So I'm thinking a little river down the middle here, which is why I left that open, and then some light coming from the top. You're always looking to like kind of the center of the paintings where you want your attention drawn, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. But most landscapes kind of are de just designed that way. So a lot of people will say, oh, nice composition. Well, a lot of these compositions have been around forever. I mean, when you're lining up a shot with your camera for a landscape, I think everybody kind of has the same idea. You know, something you're looking straight down the middle. We've all seen enough movies and TV shows to see how those scenes are set up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's along those lines when you're setting up, you know, something more in the center four squares, kind of keeping people aligned in the, you know, down looking down center. So there's those things to consider as well. And of course, distance perspective you know there's a lot of factors to keep in but I wouldn't get caught up in that I would just you know throw the paint on the paper and kind of move things around a little bit and from painting to painting you'll you'll make little tweaks as you go so it's not anything to get caught up in frustrated with or get aggravated by um, you know you don't need to try that hard this is meant to be a fun hobby and painting things very specifically or tedious in a tedious manner is not something that, uh, uh, you know, I would say to do, although I have done it. So <laughs> that's something, <laughs> you know, I, I really wanted to improve, though, and, and keep getting better and better. Just a perfectionist nature, I think, which is what a lot of artists have anyways. Um, but actually the interest of the painting a lot of times comes from imperfection you know there's something about the painting in general it has a sort of spontaneity to it so you want to allow for that i've said this before you want to allow for things to happen let things happen not everything has to be in your control and once you roll with it and you do this loose fast and fun it doesn't have to be fast though I know I say that but I mean if you're painting in this manner and you're on this size paper it's probably going to take you you know 15 minutes tops really to do a painting so it's always say fun fast and loose your preparation of getting your paints out setting up your paper and that probably take longer than your painting um, you know and then when you do the painting you look at it a little bit let it sit there and uh, look at it the next day, you know, after you've stared at it for a half an hour. Everything's going to look wrong. And you'll take any painting, throw it on the shelf, and then the next day or two, go look at it again. And you'll probably say, you know, this, this isn't bad. Well, what do I like about this? Well, there's some things I don't like, but I'll get it on the next painting. So I did a little scraping with the uh, card which you've seen my car, my rock scraping video is probably the most watched of all my videos. People love rock scraping and so do I. I'm using the side of this fan brush. This is probably the best use of the fan brush is that you can make these trees and stuff real quick. So it makes a little blue in there. Let's put a little blue in if there's going to be a little creek or something because sometimes people will look at it. I've had people look and say, oh, it's a nice path. Let's pop in a couple of birds. 
And I think that will do it. See what it looks like with a mat. Looks pretty good. Scrape in a few more sticks. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.